दैट अष्ट सोपान भक्ति बाय रूप गोस्वामी जी सो अष्ट मीन्स एट सो दीज आर द एट स्टेप्स ऑन द लैडर ऑफ भक्ति and do not get confused eh? because in bhagavad gita in the chapter 12 lord krishna said cultivate those qualities these eight steps are no different than those 32 qualities they are all embedded in there okay so different preachers different rishis different yogis according to the students they just uh, made their curriculum so this is uh, rup goswami ji he said that's how we increase our bhakti okay so first one he said shraddha and we talked about it if you have any question on any one of these we can discuss it before we start the number 6 today so shraddha is the faith satsang is the company we keep company of holy people it's very very important see this is where we have the choice the kind of a company we can keep bhajan kriya anarth nivritti and then number 5 was nishtha firm faith nishtha okay any question on any one of them uh, can you repeat the four मैंने अंत करण लिखा हुआ है अंत करण शुद्धि नहीं फोर्थ इज अनर्थ 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 होता है ना अनर्थ मीन्स एनीथिंग बैड एनीथिंग नेगेटिव एनी फ्लॉ खत्म हो जाने शुरू हो जाने चाहिए एट दिस पॉइंट जस्ट अनर्थ 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 निवृत्ति अनर्थ निवृत्ति थैंक यू या Oh, no, this is a, and and basically this means there is more and more purity in our subtle body now mind is pure intellect is pure chit is getting purer okay and ego also pure oh, sorry okay. so that's why i told you last time this is uh, the longest step every step is not the same height this is the longest one okay so and then we do many many things so we read books also see satsang has that effect on us reading the scriptures have that effect also when we meditate when we think about god also that has the effect of removing the anarth in us the flaws in us okay so when the all these कचरा जिसको कहते हैं इट विल बी रिमूव ओनली देन वी कैन सी द मूवमेंट अदरवाइज इट्स ए कचरा सो दीज आर द फ्लॉज अवर ओन फ्लॉज सी आउटसाइड फ्लॉज वी सी इन अवर हाउस ऑन द स्ट्रीट इन द एनवायरमेंट बट दीज आर इंटरनल फ्लॉज सो अल्टीमेटली वी गॉट टू रिमूव दीज फ्लॉज ओके सो एनी बडी एल्स ऑन दिस एनी क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस can you you know as you are giving the english of uh, shraddha faith satsang company can you also give the english of all of them as you go down please yes yes so so far you got it for all five right no you give faith and company of holy people so bhajan yeah, kriya, bhajan, uh, bhaj, kriya. Bhajan, bhajan kriya is uh, uh, is uh, is like a devotion bhajan is a devotion okay harshi In Bhakti. this session, in number three, you had given us nine ways, uh, and last one was Atam Nivedanam. I I don't understand what was that. Ah, yeah, Atam Nivedanam. Yeah, it's like a surrender. Okay. And one day I'm gonna go over these. Maybe next week I'll go over these uh, Navda Bhakti. Ah, uh, yeah. Harshi, which one is fifth one? Fifth one, please. F- fifth one is uh, Nishtha. nishtha okay nishtha is a, a firm resolve nishtha okay see at the time of the faith 
it can still fluctuate. Sometimes we have more faith, sometimes we don't have enough faith, or sometimes we can even change the faith also. Oh, this route is not good. I'm going to take that route. But by the time you are in the Nishtha, <laughs> this is so strong. <laughs> Nobody can shake you up. Nobody can allure you that, no, there's another Baba Chi. Let's go there. You'll get something bigger. You say, no, you go to that Baba. I don't need any Baba Baba now anymore. If I found what I was looking for. That's a Nishtha. See, in the beginning, we see that people just, uh, uh, and which is okay too, because they really have not found what they were looking for. But when you have found with your own practice and with your own determination and with the grace of God, you say, yeah, this is it. Now I have to just start my work, Inter inner journey. The real inner journey actually has started from here. So Nishta. They say the mountains are, uh, you cannot move the mountains, but stronger than the mountains are, the Mahapurushon ki Nishta, the great people's Nishta. They can even move the mountains. Okay? So that kind of a faith, firm faith we need. Okay? And I was telling you last time, that uh, when we do uh, uh, Narad Bhakti Sutra, you will find in that beautiful scripture, uh, that question come up, uh, that what is the proof of Bhakti? Proof of Bhakti. Initially, a person might look for the proof, but when you have the Nishtha, you're firmly established, you're not looking for any outer proof. You don't say that I got to see God or I got to see that God gives me something. Then I'll believe in God. No, you're not looking for any outer proof. You really know that. That bhakti is itself is the proof. Because you start feeling the bliss of God. You start feeling the presence of God. And that is a proof for you. इस हिंदी में कहते हैं भगवान की उपस्थिति का अभास, like a presence of God you feel, you really cannot define it but you feel it, and no matter what happens in life, whether there is a good fortune or a calamity, you always think that it is God's grace. I don't see the grace right now, but this is God's grace, always. Feeling that. Okay? So only a Bhagat can say that. Now, if you don't have a question, then let's look at the sixth step today, which is called Ruchi. Ruchi. When you start feeling that Love of God, presence of God, that you have more and more, deeper and deeper interest in thinking about God. So it's like a weather, whenever you have a choice between attending a satsang or attending a a social gathering, automatically you will go for satsang. There's no question about it. No thinking about it. Doesn't even matter that what will others do. Because you are enjoying it. You are enjoying it so much that automatically your feet go towards that. When we did the Tatri Upanishad, over there, the Rishi said, God is Rasmaya. Ras Roop, Ras Sindhu, Ras Nidhi, Ras Raj, Rasik Shiromani. Those were the words that great Rishi used. Let me repeat it again. Ras Roop, 
that form of god you just feel ras in it ras means enjoyment in it ras sindhu sindhu means ocean god is the ocean of that bliss when we when we have the ocean of bliss why run after a small thing ras nidhi nidhi means treasure he is a full of a treasure ras raj raj means a king he is the king of the ras and rasik shiromani shiromani is the highest and the highest there is nothing above him so it was from tatri upanishad but we do not feel this love yet why because we have a disease and this is disease according to these saints is called a bhav rog bhav rog in the bhajans we sing that bhav rog that means our senses are polluted and we just get drawn towards the world we think that worldly players will give us bliss and that is a bhav rog it's almost like when somebody has a jaundice even the sweet things taste bitter to that person so the same thing we people at a ordinary level we have that problem instead of going for a kirtan or going for a meditation or doing some seva that is bitter to us even though a bhagat says that's where the ras is that's where the bliss is so when we have a bhav rog the bhagavat kriya is bitter to us all that is bhagavat kriya okay study of the scripture sitting down and reading the ramayan or gita are going for satsang this bitterness is in direct proportion to the level of the bhav rog more bhav rog the bitter the bhagavat kriya some people get frustrated when they have to stay in satsang long they just want a short satsang why do it for 5 hours or 4 hours or all day all night long so when you have a bhav rog that is the problem so symptoms of bhav rog is the worldly matters seem very important oh i have to do this i have to go to that party the worldly relationships they feel more important to us than the godly relationship that's a symptom of a bhav rog so worldly matters seem very important and interesting and divine discourses are useless and unimportant or we'll do it later on when we get old time is not yet i'm too young for this i have kids at home kids are not married or they don't have kids yet and they are not married yet all kinds of excuses so initially we need to do the bhakti kriya forcefully that is the remedy for this bhav rog and with the time you will develop love for it so that's why having a disciplined life is very important schedule time for your bhakti schedule time for your meditation schedule time to do the seva schedule time to study also swadhyay so in hindi we say zabardasti karo look at the clock this is the time to do it hey this is it no ifs and buts so later on what happens we reach to the ruchi level interest is developed you will want to do godly duties more and more more and more ram sita and lakshman in their exile they did go to valmiki's ashram also 
and ram ji asked rishi valmiki that i have to stay in the jungle for 14 years where should i stay and valmiki ji said tell me the place where you are not you are everywhere and then valmiki ji is the one who asked ram he said give me those kind of ears samudar saman that big ears so that i keep on listening to your name because your name is everywhere jinke shravan samudra samana katha tumhari subhag sar mana भरहीन रंतर होई न पूरे तिन के कहो तुम गरिए नूरे दिस इज हाउ तुलसीदास जी रोड दैट डायलॉग दैट नो मैटर हाउ मच यू हियर द नेम ऑफ गॉड इट्स नेवर अनफ फॉर यू दैट मींस यू हैव रीच दैट रुचि स्टेज दैट योर इंटरेस्ट इज ओनली इन हियरिंग द नेम ऑफ गॉड नथिंग एल्स दैट्स अ रुचि so direct translation of ruchi means interest okay so when someone has this kind of appetite for god's bhakti that is ruchi that's it now it's like a technical word ruchi and from there you go to the seventh step which is called asakti asakti formally attached i always tell you that this word becomes confusing for people if they don't understand the technical difference between sakta asakt and asakt sakt means attached asakt means detached and asakt is extremely attached just remember that otherwise it's, it seems like asakti average person so asakti means detachment from god now no so extremely attached attachment only to god man bhagwan me pragad roop me ho gaya pragad is like a extremely attached and that's how we surrender our intellect to god also See, just like a smoker has asakti in cigarettes, even though every pack of the cigarette says it's harmful to your health, there's a caution over there. But the buddhi has been surrendered to cigarettes, so even that warning is not seen because of that asakti with the cigarettes. the same way for a person who drinks too much no matter what the reports are what people say they'll say no it's good for my heart how about your lungs and the liver and your pocket and your time and your mind above all do you want to take that chance where you lose control over your mind but so much asakti in drinking then buddhi has been surrendered to that particular object so but over here a bhagat has surrendered to god and this devotee does not think what will i get from this god doesn't matter i'm just attached i am attached to god and that's where those terms come tum mere the tum mere ho tum hamare rahoge that means even when i didn't know you you were mine now i know you you are mine 
and even in future in spite of the bad times you will be mine that kind of a relationship with god this this level of a bhagat is a very high level of bhagat the degrees of bhagat this is a uch level okay or uch sadhak this is a nishkam bhagati so love is not because we get something from god we love god without any kind of a cause causeless bhakti when calamities come we still we do, do not get disturbed it's almost like even we put gold in the fire what happens to gold it shines it shines even more than before the same thing happens to a bhagat of this level during calamities bhakti increases if you are not a bhagat during calamities you will start blaming god i did so much bhakti and this is what you gave me no this level of a bhagat says no oh, that's well with me this is okay whatever you are doing that's fine with me okay so anukul pratikul or neutral in all conditions these are the three kinds of behavior in the world right you have heard these terms anukul means according to your liking pratikul means opposite of your liking and neutral is the same neither too much this way nor that way so this is like with the world but with the god we got to have a that divine love so we are not looking at the outcomes we are just only looking at the love okay so this is called asakti extreme attachment to god in spite of what is happening in the external world number 8 is called bhav bhav and this will be another topic also one of these wednesdays of bhav there are several bhavs so i'll talk about that too but right now in this context this rishi is telling us that eighth ladder is a bhav that means when you reach here the feeling of the presence or the relationship with god is not far you have reached very close when you have reached to this earth level it's almost like a, how do we know how do we turn from a night to day is there a lot of noise no sun comes and it's day no matter how dark the night was sun comes it's a day the same way with all the effort which we have made when we have reached the eighth step you feel the presence of god okay in hindi they say ravi bin raat na jaye ravi means the sun and for us the bhagats what is raat what is night night is the maya so this maya or the impact of the maya or the effect of the maya will go away when you have a grace of god otherwise we are always under the ropes of this maya the effect of this maya is so much but at this level the darkness or the maya gets away with the light of god so this ravi is like a god for us so bhagavat prapti so it's like a one step before bhagavat prapti before that we have not and until now also we have not gotten that kind of a relationship so this bhav is a one step before bhagavat prapti
how do you feel when you are there extreme peace that's why often you ask me how do we know whether our sadhana is working or not what do i tell you middle of the night when you wake up pay attention are you peaceful or disturbed if you are peaceful your sadhana is working or somebody said something to you something wrong has happened according to the external conditions or can you still stay peaceful or not you got a news that something is wrong with your blood test can you still stay peaceful not only you somebody else you love you can can you still stay peaceful it's not that you are not supposed to take care of that problem but can you do it take care of the problem peacefully or with a disturbed mind if you can do it peacefully you are a bhagat so this is that's how you know so extreme shanti outer disturbances do not have the effect on the antakaran anymore because it's pure it's clean another thing no anger at all because anger is a disturbance and another thing you will see that you do not like to waste time because you understand this time is the most precious commodity and you want to use it for bhagavat prapti the goal of life is bhagavat prapti everything else is superficial bhagavat prapti there's no bigger gain then love for god you really don't want to he hear anything worldly you don't even want to see anything worldly because it's a waste of time god god and only god i still remember oh 20 years ago my daughter got married back then there used to be big albums i went to india and i took the album of her wedding one of the albums my guru ji he looked at it literally he did what do we do when we see the pictures even on the facebook we just want to enlarge it how our fingers go this is the difference between a worldly person and a godly person he didn't want to waste any time that was a clear indication to me that these are all worldly things why waste energy why waste time why waste money then my second daughter got married never got any pictures taken didn't even invite uh, hired that what do you call photographer or videographer there was no need for it because that was a message very clear message that these worldly things we got to life is not for the worldly things the purpose of life is godly see that's how the gurus they teach us with examples it's not that gurus are sitting in the jungles because if they sit in the jungles how can they teach us gurus are householders like us and they teach us while being in the house and showing that uh, the real purpose of this life and i will talk about guru also one of these days that's another topic which we don't understand it fully so this feeling of god god constantly we have many many examples i mean i give you the first hand example of my guruji but 
you have read about it in the scriptures all along. Surdas Ji, it's not a fiction. He lived and he was blind also. And he was intoxicated with the love of God all his life. He wrote many, many bhajans for Lord Krishna. One day he was doing a satsang in somebody's house. Everyone left. Surdasi was left alone. He started walking with the help of a stick in the dark night towards his home from that satsangi's home. While he was walking, there was a big ditch. He fell into it. He didn't know how to get out. Lord Krishna appeared in a child's form, held his stick, and Sudhasji started talking to him. He said, there's a little boy who has come to help me. But Lord Krishna moved as soon as Surdas Ji was standing, he could walk. Lord Krishna just ran away without talking to him. Because he knew that Surdas Ji can walk. When Surdas Ji wrote afterwards, he said, Haat chudai jat ho. Because he just shook the hand away and he went. Haath chudai jat ho nirbal jaan ke mohi. Hirde te tab jau ge mard bataunga to. This is a bhagat of this level. He says, you are in my heart. You cannot leave from there. I did recognize you came to help me. Because only you can come and help me. Do we have that kind of a feeling that God is with us? God is protecting us? That is a bhakti. And Surdas Ji always uh, thought about Krishna and Radha also. Because Lord Krishna talked about Surdas all the time, so Radha wanted to see Surdas. She wanted to meet him. One day Surdas is sitting in the hut and he heard the pile. Surdas she knew it's Radha because he knew if I get hold of Radha, then Krishna will come too. He tried to hold Radha's feet and the pile came off. He had the pile in his hand. He said, I'll give the pile to you only if you give me darshan. With Krishna though. He wanted to see the both of them. He's blind. When he said that, both Radha and Krishna, they were in front of him. First time in his life he could see. And then uh, Krishna said, Ask, ask me anything. I can give you the eyes to see for the rest of your life. What did he ask for? He said, Please, take these outer eyes away now. I don't want to see anything else after seeing you both. He could have gotten rid of his blindness, but he did not. He said, this is the last thing I saw and the first thing I saw. This is the only thing I wanted to see. This is Bhava. See, from this kind of a feeling of love, then you can say that Bhagavata Prapti is not far. That oneness, the union, the yoga which we talk about, how can that be far? When worldly pleasures, worldly treasures, worldly relationships don't mean anything. It's only God which has, has really possessed you almost. Then sure, you have reached there. So this is uh, 
what Rupa Goswami Ji said. So it's not, bhakti is not just only singing the bhajan. Bhakti is not just one thing, but we got to see whether we are inching up towards that or not. And they say the sadhana is not done. Even after that, there is sadhana continues even after that. As long as we are in a human body, sadhana has to continue. We cannot say that, oh, I have become a great devotee now. And God is my servant now. No. Sadhana continues. You keep feeling the presence of God. Okay. So let's stop it here. And I will continue with the other kinds of bhaktis also. According to other uh, great uh, uh, yogis, the rishis, the sadhus, orators. But I just want you to go through this Ashta Supana Bhakti by Rupa Goswami Ji with you. Okay, so if you don't have any question, then we will start with our pranayam today. But let me read that Sanskrit verse again. Adav Shraddha Tataha Sadhu Sango At Bhajan Kriya Tataha Anarth Nivriti Syayataho Nishtha Ruchi Tatha Atha Asakti Tato Bhavs Tatha Prema Abhyudyanti Sadhaka Namyam Premya so this is a kram. This is the sequence, he says. According to this sequence, if you do the bhakti, you will attain God. Okay? Anybody, any question? <clears throat> Kim. Kim, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Harsh. She is a wonderful. Get a little closer. Get a little closer. Okay. Um, thank you for the wonderful class. Uh, I was just curious if you could talk about, um, you know, um, all these steps of bhakti and and how um, how this was for you when you were working in the corporate world, uh, you know, a long time ago. Um, you know, how you were able to, to practice and, and go through these kinds of steps uh, while working such a, you know, in such an environment all the time. So. Yeah, to me, I think the daily discipline. Every day, morning and evening time, for the sitting down and doing the prayers. Setting aside some time for the Sadhana also, the Hatha Yoga Sadhana too. So doing, taking care of the body and then always making sure that every day you read a scripture also. And then another thing which really helped me was uh, going to my Guruji's uh, ashram regularly. Spending few weeks every year at his feet. That encouraged me, that he blessed me. I think that really worked. Okay, um, so. Sorry, I think my question was more like uh, what the experience was like for you. So were you able to stay attached to God all the time and feel like this complete peace uh, even while you were doing all of this or, or did it come gradually to you or, or um... it comes gradually it comes gradually and then something which which agitates you pay attention and move away from it the sooner you move away the better it is and that's where when i left my uh, professional career also Yes, could you talk about that a little bit? Because maybe I'm later on, <laughs> maybe <laughs> one on one, we can talk about it, Kim. <laughs> I'm sure everybody else is not interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> but did you okay. leave? Did you leave because it was hard for you to practice these things while you were in the job? It was. It was definitely. I had to go against some of the principles. Uh, you know that uh, in accounting, there's a very popular saying: "Ask an accountant." Uh, what is two plus two? He will say, what do you want it to be? 
<laughs> Haven't you heard that? <laughs> so there are sometimes you have to uh, bend your uh, uh, rules and uh, that bothered me, definitely it bothered me. So I didn't want to stay in that uh, financial world anymore. Okay. Thank you. So, so but much. gradually, it's like a, a, a sadhana is always gradual. It's gradual. And sadhana is still continuing. I'm not where uh, 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 I don't need to do the sadhana. But sadhana has become very enjoyable now. I would rather do the sadhana than anything else. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, so it becomes... I, uh, I, I think hmm? what Kim is trying to ask, or maybe it is my question, can you be in the corporate world at the same time, be a Bhagat? Because you are so much worldly out there and then you are trying to be a Bhagat on the other side. I think that's what she is maybe leading to. Can you be both? Can you have both feet in two different worlds at the same time? Uh, maybe some that... people can. Maybe some people can, but ordinarily it is hard. Because whatever you do in the world, it does affect you. We are not totally um, a, 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 like a, a, a Teflon pen. It does affect us. So the decision got to be made. That's why a lot of people, they just uh, um, retire early or change their profession. So it's a personal decision. But uh, maybe some people can do it, Punam. Some people, maybe they can just uh, keep a good balance. See, just like a, a family life versus a spiritual life. Some people can do it very nicely, but some people say, no, that is more important to me. I want to be a sannyasi. So this is the freedom we all have. That's why as a human being, this is a karma yoni, and we have the freedom to choose our own karma. Okay? There's no one way for everybody. But ultimately, these steps are for everybody. Whether we want to do it uh, 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 working in a corporate world, and it would be a polluted corporate world, or political world, or uh, uh, household. So wherever God puts you, wherever you are according to your own stage in life, but uh, these, these, these steps don't change. Or the qualities which we need to cultivate uh, being a devotee, according to Lord Krishna, that doesn't change. And if we change that, we'll see the impact impact of that in our certain body also. Guruji? Okay. Yes, Rhonda. Rhonda. Yes. <laughs> um, wouldn't you say that this is practicing detachment when you're in that environment? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you got to practice detachment, but sometimes you cannot do enough detachment while in, and then you got to move away. So decision we got to make. Sometimes it could be in a, with the relationship. Sometimes it could be with the environment or your work. It, 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 so many different issues come. But if we don't even know what we are supposed to do, where we are going, the steps on the ladders which we are climbing on, then we cannot make the proper decision. So sure, ultimately it's a detachment from the world and attachment to God. And attachment to that level with God where we cannot be shaken up again. No matter what happens in the world. That kind of attachment. See, right now we are very attached to the world. Very attached to the world. Very attached to the body. So we got to just reverse that a little. Okay. So uh, if you don't have any question, we can talk about the pranayama a little bit. But if you uh, want to tell me what is your question about that pranayama, then maybe I can uh, um, uh, give you clarity on that. Jyoti ji, uh, the question that we had that day, did you want to ask her where we were getting a little confused? You have unmute. to unmute. Uh, Jyoti, unmute. Jyoti, un unmute. Unmute yourself, please. Ah, so the question was the first part I can do it. Um, um, I think um, 
the second one is inhale and exhale vigorously. Um, the second part of the pranayam is. Um, yeah. Is it is it more like a kapal bhati like, or or, or it is more like inhale no. exhale inhale no, exhale. No, you you just do no kapal bhati is uh, <clears throat> where you exhale forcefully and inhale gently. That it is not kapal bhati. But uh, you want to say bhasrika basically, but it's not bhasrika either. Bhasrika, what you do is you go over here, just one, you do one and then one out and one in. You just don't do it, you don't keep on doing it. Okay? So vigorously exhale and vigorously inhale one time. And then do it again, and then do it again. So when you have done it three times, then you take a little break, meditate, then from the other side. Okay. So because the third third step is where you rapidly do it. Okay. So rapidly means you just keep on doing it. Okay. In the second one, you just vigorously. First, first you inhale from both sides, then exhale vigorously one time, and then vigorously inhale, then again. So three times you do it like that. So each inhalation and exhalation is vigorous, not rapid. Okay. Okay. So that is the difference. Is that clear? Yes. Uh, any other question? I have a question about the fourth one, Mark. Okay, what is the question about the fourth the, one? The question is that uh, when you uh, inhale, do you exhale from the left itself or you exhale from yes. the right? Yes, right. you're talking right. about after the kumbhak, right? Yes, after the kumbhak. Yeah, sorry. after the kumbhak, you're going to exhale from the same side. Thank you. Okay. And then and second time around, you will switch the side, then okay. you will uh, exhale from the right side. So you are working on both sides, but one side at a time. One side, thank you. So three times yes. one side and then three times the other side. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Got thank it? you so much. Got it. Anybody thank else? Harshi, my question was that once you are doing this meditation in between and you're on the third step and you're in meditation, but that meditation has gone on for a longer period of time, is it necessary to finish with the fourth step or... You can stop. Yes. If you, no. Yeah. It is, no, it is important to finish because you have not done kumbhak. Okay. Because only in the fourth step you are doing the kumbhak. Right. Unless you do kumbhak, it's not a pranaya. Okay. Okay. So fourth step is important, but uh, um, if you want to do longer meditation after third, if that's where you are right now, that's okay. But later on, do the fourth step also, where you do the kumbhak. Because kumbhak is the one where you are getting the benefit at a physical level. Heart muscles, the lung muscles. You want to make sure that you want to hold the breath in there and then help your body to get rid of the toxins out. Okay. Because there's an exchange of the air. When you're doing the kumbhak, the Air which you have inhaled, it expands, it goes into the area where there's a foul air and there's an exchange of the air. And when you exhale, you are exhaling the foul air. So you want to make sure that you do that too. Okay? Thank you. That clear, Ajayati? Yes. Yeah, good thing that you are doing a longer meditation. Definitely, meditation is the um, uh, main thing you want to do. But you got to take care of this body also. Right? As long as we live in this body, it's our duty to take care of this body. We have to make sure we feed it properly, we clean it properly, we exercise it properly. See, these are the three things we do with the body. All of us do that. We feed it, we clean it, and we exercise it. So there are so many different ways to exercise, so many different ways to clean. Most of the people, they clean it only outside, but yogis, they say clean it inside also this body. Make sure your nose is clean. Make sure your throat and the esophagus is clean. Make sure your intestines and the stomach is clean. 
eyes are clean in kapal bhati we clean our head that's what we are doing kapal bhati is not a pranayam actually a lot of people think that's a pranayam kapal bhati is a cleansing if you look at those shatakaram all the shatakarams are for the cleansing neti dhoti nali kapal bhati and basti these are the six Uh, so kapal and bhati is a cleansing not a pranayam okay i know a lot of people they think that kapal bhati is a pranayam is a cleansing we are cleaning our head head cleansing kapal means this kapal bhati uh, ji any tips on how to clean so eyes? we do three yes tratak tratak is the uh, 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 yogis they say tratak is a kriya tratak is when we look at something i remember when i was little my guruji used to draw a circle on a piece of paper and put it near the wall on the wall and then have us sit a few feet away and keep looking at that black ball uh, 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 like a round yeah. circle keep looking at it keep looking at it until the tears start flowing down this is one way to do kapal bhati i mean the tratak yeah. another way to do tratak is you just uh, sit like this and keep looking at the tip of your nose mm -hmm. and again this helps your neck muscles also it helps your back also and you keep looking and if you do it long enough your eyes will water water and that is called tratak thank you make sure you do it tratak helps tratak helps uh, for concentration too because in order to look at that black uh, circle or in order to look at the tip of your nose you need to concentrate and mm -hmm. we all know how powerful this power of concentration is no matter what we do outside any kind of action concentration is needed so we should teach our children grandchildren to the tratak okay so six Thank cleansings you. remember those neti dhoti nali kapal bhati tratak and basti so we can talk about it more in detail because all of them have several uh, 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 sub sections also there are so many different kinds of netis so many different kinds of dhotis different kinds of tratak different kinds of kapal bhati also different kinds okay so uh, as time goes i'll just uh, if there is a interest then i'll teach you more but right now just make sure you do uh, for the body these three things and make sure you do it like a yogi feed the body satvik yogi khud clean the body like a yogi and exercise it like a yogi what is the exercise like a yogi make this body so healthy that you forget about the body we don't do exercise for the body to become obsessed about the body we exercise the body so that we can forget about the body that's a yogic way of doing exercise so this is for the body then for the mind also three things we do we feed the mind we clean the mind and we exercise the mind and when we talk about the mind mind means the man buddhi ahankara also in there means like it the whole mind together how do we clean the mind all those flaws kaam krodh lobh moh ahankar make sure they are out that's another topic uh, came you can write down now i'm going to talk about all these uh, six shatrus uh, uh, the enemies uh, in detail one one at a time because all of you know the names uh, but i think we need to explore more in these classes okay so when we get rid of these flaws mind is clean and the same thing rishi patanjali said ahinsa satya astya brahmacharya prikra when we follow those principles we are cleaning our mind 
mind should be clean and then how do we nourish the mind what kind of a food we give studying of the scriptures attending satsang spending some time at the feet of your guru and then uh, exercise of the mind when we meditate mind which likes to go into the worldly things bringing it back into the divine that is exercise of the mind so same three things we do for the body and the same three things for the mind and that's how we do our practice the sadhana uh, there's a question um nishtha has a question nishtha you have to unmute yourself yes, yes. Uh, thank you good morning everyone um so good i morning. To have you please um, add another topic for the discussion. I don't know if you've done it already, but it would be depression and how, like, I, I know a couple of people who are going through this right now, but how can I help them? Okay, okay. sure. Sure, depression, definitely. I came and note that down also. No, we have not done it, but we'll do it, definitely. Because it's a pretty appropriate topic uh, for these days also. Because what's going on in the world, it can definitely take our mind towards uh, this sadness. And if it stays in the sadness for too long, we get depressed. But we'll talk about it in detail. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you, Nishan. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have much. a question about um, the pranayam. Starting with the first step, is it mm -hmm. a very uh, deep exhalation and a very deep inhalation till you can fully exhale and inhale everything you can? Yes. Yeah, it should be deep. But only only thing is when you exhale, it's forceful. When you inhale, it's a gentle. So do you try okay. to take in as much as you can or... As much as you can, yes, definitely. Inhale as much as you can, exhale as much as you can, definitely. And is okay. that in all the steps then? Full, full. All the steps it should be, yeah, yeah. And then when you exhale, always try to squeeze your stomach in. Right. When you squeeze your stomach in, when you exhale, you are helping that exhalation to become better. And when you inhale, Keep your attention inside you. It's almost like when you inhale, inhalation is always bottom up. Exhalation is always top down. Just think about it. When you want to empty a glass or a jug, right. when you fill it up, it goes at the bottom first and slowly it comes to the top. And when you empty it, it comes out from the top first and then bottom. It's the same thing over here. Just keep your attention inside you. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. I hope this helps. Any other question? Anybody? No? Okay. All right. So, um, Sarshi, I wanted to share something. Yesterday... Sure. On students of spirituality, I posted a video about Jatayu. Since we read about Jatayu yesterday in Ramayana, so there's a big sculpture in mm -hmm. India, Kerala Kolam, mm -hmm. and that's the biggest bird sculpture in uh, world, and that is worth knowing about it. Okay, all right. So okay. people can look at it, yeah. watch that video. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, anybody else? No? Nishi wanted to. So, play. anybody wants to say a song? So, who wants to sing? No, Nishi wants to play a prayer song. I said, if nobody is singing, nobody then I, I have a song I can share. Okay. All right, sure, sure, play that then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so 